We're going to take uh, continue to take a look at the late week storm that will be pushing across the plains and the Midwest. And I think this is the storm that will bring some snow. I don't think it's a huge snow producer, but it's also going to produce some rain and also uh, the first, well, the second threat. There's a threat for severe weather a little on Thursday, but I do think there could be some severe weather on Friday as well. All right, let me take you to the satellite picture here because I want to show you where this storm uh, is uh, located here. There it is. Let me put it in the motion for you here. All right, there we go. So we've got this first storm off the California coast. We talked about that yesterday. That's going to primarily bring rain to the plains and the Midwest as we head into Wednesday night and Thursday. This is the storm, though. That's going to change the pattern a little bit and bring the possibility for snow. And it's coming in two pieces. You have one piece here. This will be coming into California. And then this piece here across Alaska. Think about it this way. This is the storm. And then this is going to be steering this storm and also bringing an injection of cold air into the storm to provide a little bit of snow on the backside. So it's complicated, but you see this set up quite a bit across the United States. Let's go to the 500 millibar and I can show you what I mean. So this is tomorrow afternoon. Here's your first storm. This is one off the California coast. Here are the two different pieces that I talked about coming along the west coast of the United States. Let's play for it. This is Thursday afternoon, so here's what I'm talking about. This, this is the initial storm that's going to provide rain on Thursday. But here's the storm, and then here's the cold air injection. The northern, think about this, the northern piece provides the cold air, the southern piece provides the storm. For this to be a big, to produce a lot of snow, what has to happen is, is that this energy has to get out ahead of the northern piece, strengthen, and then that's where you get a big snow. But if this piece of energy, in a sense, moves at the same speed, then what happens is the storm that forms is going to be weaker, and then you would get less precipitation. And that's kind of what it's looking like right now. Let me show you how this is going to evolve here as we move forward here. So let's go into Friday morning. Now, see what's going on here? You've got your northern piece of energy, but your storm or southern piece is kind of lagging a little bit. It's almost, in a sense, moving with at the same speed as the northern piece. So what happens is, instead of getting a storm to strengthen, it's almost like you just get a cold front moving across the southern tier, tier of U.S., and you don't get as much precipitation. Take a look at the surface map. See, this is what it looks like. You have a frontal boundary, but you really don't have a weak, you don't really have a storm. Watch what happens Friday evening. So, here we go, here we go, there we go again, there we go, this is Friday night. So, here's the northern piece of energy. See, the southern piece of energy is coming to the east, so you will get a storm, but it looks very weak. In a sense, Instead of a consolid piece of energy, this energy looks like a rubber band. It's stretched out. So that tells me it's a weak storm. And when you look at the surface map, it is. Here's the storm way down here, 1,012 millibars. That's a very weak storm. Now watch what happens moving forward. Here we go. This is Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon. There it is. So here's your northern piece strengthening a little bit. And you could see this whole southern piece kind of stretched out like a rubber band. So what happens is you get a weaker storm. There it is. Right there. You see that? 1,004 millibars. So that tells me because you have a weak storm along the boundary, yes, there's going to be accumulating snow. Dodge City, Des Moines, I think just south of Minneapolis toward Green Bay and in the eastern part of the upper peninsula of Michigan in this area. But I think we're talking about accumulations of a couple of inches, a few inches. Perhaps there could be more near the lakes. Because in time, as we get into Saturday night, you see the upper piece of energy here start to strengthen a little bit. Watch. Boom, 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 boom. Right there. You see that? Now, because of that, as the storm comes north, this is where it begins to strengthen. But instead of a strengthening down here across the Mid-South and having higher snow amounts back across the Midwest, the storm waits to strengthen until it's a lot farther north. See, there it goes. So bigger snows will be farther north. But I think for many locations, you're talking about one to three inches of snow, except northern lower peninsula of Michigan and the eastern UP. Now, 
The other thing this storm will do is because it, it looks like it will strengthen Saturday night, wind starts to be a problem. And then that, 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 that's where we start getting wind. Take a look at this. These are lines of equal pressure called isobars. The more lines in a given area, the stronger the wind is. And this looks like the winds are going to be quite gusty here in Chicago Saturday night. Now, I mentioned that because I, I, we have the NFL the, the playoff games this weekend. Now, this storm will have some impact, but if you look at all of the games on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, the one game to me that's going to be impacted the most would be the uh, Green Bay game at, uh, at, uh, uh, at Chicago at Soldier Field here. Let me, let me take this off so you could see everything here, and let me put this uh, on uh, full here. So let me put this off uh, there. Okay. I don't think temperatures are a huge deal in the 20s, but see, the wind can be a problem here. Look at the winds. Now, we've taken them down a little bit here. I still think we're looking at sustained winds here, about 15 to 20 miles per hour, at least gust to 30, and that's going to impact the game a little bit here with the wind. AccuWeather real field temperatures in the teens. Not as cold as what I thought, but cold enough. Really quickly here, and I do want to end with this, the other story with this storm on the southeastern flank will be the possibility of severe weather. Friday afternoon, Friday evening, from Tennessee down toward the central Gulf Coast states. But I, I'd really worry about this area, Lake Charles, Shreveport, up in the Mississippi. Mostly damaging winds and some hail. I don't think there's a tornado threat, but we'll continue to keep you updated on this storm on the feed all week.